finally, episode one of the We Are Everywhere podcast. And in life, there's there's ways to do things. There's the right way to do things, and there's the wrong way to do things. And I couldn't, in good conscience, start a fish-based podcast without having Tyler Riggs on the first episode. Um, a little bit of a backstory. Tyler and I, whenever I was in college, I had a college radio show called The Aquarium. And each week we would, Tyler and I would get on and we would talk about the tour that was just happening or the shows that they played. And um, I think every week we had our group of friends listen and my mom listen. But either way, it was fun. And I couldn't, in good conscience, start a fish podcast without having Tyler on. So Episode one, our first guest, Tyler Riggs. What's, what's up? up? What's up? How are you? Man, just nostalgic. Just uh, me and you back on the airwaves again. Maybe we'll have uh, more listeners this go around. You know? <laughs> of course, that was you were trying to um, go through school, and that was like a credited class thing, right? Right, yeah. Right. yeah. So, And they gave yeah. this almost too much freedom because they were like hey yeah you can make your radio show about anything you want and i was like okay well mine's gonna be about fish might as well dissect be- 20 minute jams and what was it was that 2013 or 2014 that was like 20 both of those years huh yeah 2013 and 14 yeah um, the fall tour and 2013 is where we started wasn't it yep which yep. is a really good tour to uh to dissect i still, those- still one of my favorites uh post uh breakup i guess you would, since we're in 4.0 yeah. now you can't say yeah anymore. <laughs> so let, that's a good good topic to start on what are your thoughts on the 4.0 like the name of it or like the yeah the, the, just the overall like is it because like you see like we were talking before we started recording about like the facebook groups like addicted to fish and everything like that and it seems like a lot of the older heads or like the 1.0ers are like this isn't 4.0. And then like you have all of the people that are kind of new school that have only seen fish in 3.0 kind of excited that, Oh, Hey, I've been in more than one era of fish. So they're like claiming the 4.0, like super hard. So what do you think about it? You think it's man, you know, I I try not to like divide over labels, but, but I mean, it's a good way to kind of break it down, I guess. Uh, I, you know, in the nineties, um, it was so much from year to years, like 97 had this type of, of jamming and, you know, and then there was the more spacey stuff closer to the millennium, you know, mm-hmm. and so you could kind of break because they, they played so many more shows back then, you know, yep. and they were like in their heyday, you know, and now because I think partially because they play less shows each year, smaller tours. Um, that, so you kind of have to chunk it out, you know, like oh yeah. nine to to 2012 was kind of a little era and then you got 13 to like 17 you know yeah. whatever however you want to break it down so you could do it 3.0 um or you could get a little bit you know dissected a little more but i i tend to like okay well, they're they're in this headspace at this point and you know i guess with breakups and hiatuses that kind of made it easier but really like 3.0 was you know it's, uh, it's a long chunk of time and it helps like even just statistic wise, you know, if you're talking yeah. about, you know, stats and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, kind of a goofy, I don't really care 4.0 or 3.0 either yeah. way, but I think it is funny how, like how hardcore some people go in on that. It's almost like yeah. politics. It's like, it's like, yeah. it's still 3.0. No, it's 4.0. Yeah. <laughs> it and you know, on the message boards and all those kind of things, you're going to get like, you know, the, the old school guys that, that think all the, the young guys are little turds and then you're going to get, you know, whatever. But that's just, that's the nature of anything, I think. So I know. Just trying um, to stay out of that and let the music speak. You know? Yes, 100%. Um, and so your first, were your first shows in 3.0? Yeah. I mean, the Hampton shows. I, uh, um, I, um, so I guess this is a perfect- entirely too much money because I didn't get lottery <laughs> tickets, but I was, I became a, I became a fan. I don't know. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but in order to get oh, to yeah. that point, I became a fan like around the farmhouse when, when they dropped farmhouse. So about the time the hiatus. And of course I was like, you know, middle school. Um, let's see. So in 2000, I was like in seventh grade. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
I was too young to 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 be able to like catch any you know shows. pre hiatus shows, and then um, and then I was in high school when they came back uh, in 03 and 04 and was very I mean huge into them, but just never was able to catch a show between high school and whatever, you know, I was going to a lot of like festivals. I was, I was a huge fish head at that point, but I was, I was into all kinds of stuff. So I was going like, Hitting, like Bonnaroo, yeah. Bonnaroo, <laughs> Austin City Limits Music Festival, all that stuff. So I was like kind of uh, in a broad scope in the jam scene, mm-hmm. but um, about the time they, they, um, they called it quits in 04 was about the time that I like dove headlong into fish. It was like, you know, listening to them, all the time, every day, prospecting fish, going back through the catalog and really familiarizing myself with years. That was about that time. So, um, five years later, when they came back in 09, I was like primed and ready. I had like filled my head full of, full of all the awesome. knowledge that I needed to like just take over. And, uh, so of course, they announced the tour. I, I went to Rothbury Music Festival, which I think later they changed the name to the electric forest festival or oh. whatever it's up it's up in your neck of the yeah, woods in yeah, Michigan, right? Michigan, yeah um but that was in 08 and that was when trey and mike came out and like trey played acoustic and they brought mike out with him and they had new songs and we're like okay like this was like when they're about to get back together it mm-hmm. was like some under the surface stuff like uh, i saw some um the grab tour which was with ben Russo duo um mike and trey in 06 and so they were like playing together again, but that was like about the time Trey got arrested. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. that was like, of course, the catalyst that that led them back together, but that was still early on. But but yeah, so when when uh when Hampton happened, I obviously just like every other fish head tried to uh tried Scrape to get lottery. Up as much money as possible. Yeah, well, hopefully, you know, praying that you would get lottery, you know. But then uh, when that didn't happen, I was like, there's no way I'm missing it. Like, I've I've waited my entire life for this, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I, I think I dropped about 1500 bucks. Oh, wow. I think it was like 1200 bucks on my tickets. They were like 400 a piece. Um, I went to all three nights. And so that was my, my, uh, my first shows, yeah. The Hampton. Okay, so that's what opened up the – 09 tour so you right off the rip first notes of 3.0 that was your fluff first head. show yeah yeah the first show ever saw live was fluff head <laughs> um the i mean still to this day the loudest crowd moment of any show i've ever been to was that oh. fluff head. i mean rightly so right um yep. the anticipation plus that song in the mothership you know it's like, been yeah. five years everybody's yeah. like let's go yeah on. yeah uh, and so so yeah, how many man. shows on that 09 run did you did you do? So I did, I was pretty busy in, in 09. I did 18 shows in 09. So, you know, I was I, I was never able to do like entire tours or anything right. like that. In fact, that's the the most shows I hit in a year was that year. Um I was just pumped they were back. I was in a place in my life where I was able to to bounce around. So I I caught 18 shows a lot of uh, all over the country. I went to uh was Hampton shows, and I went to Knoxville, um, then went up to Deer Creek and um, Alpine. Uh, did Shoreline, a one-off in Shoreline. Um, did Festival Eight, the Halloween festival. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's see what else. Uh, and then did New Year's that year in Miami. Yeah, that was our because fr- those uh, 09 Miami shows were my first shows. Okay, and those were so, good ones too. Yeah. And those were my first shows with you. As that well. was that like that was such a fun that was such a fun run, dude. It uh, was such a fun trip. Um, and then on the fall tour, I caught Cincinnati and Cuyahoga Falls. I think was that yeah that was 09. Was it? Yeah, they played two nights in Cincinnati and then. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm off. Maybe that was 2010. Either way, I, I caught, eight, I know the, I caught uh, 18 shows that year, so I could go back and look. But. <laughs> I'm about to bust out the fish companion. I got it around here somewhere. Yeah. So we kind of already touched on your first show and experience with that. So I want to know what was the thing that got you hooked on fish? Like, because with a lot of people, you know, I've read stories, you know, it's like, oh, so-and-so had like a tape, you know, they were a taper and 
I, they played it for me. I was in high school. It was 1997. Mm -hmm. And then other people, it's like, you know, just found out about them in 09 or whatever. So what was that mm -hmm. first experience where you hear fish and you're like, oh, this is my thing now? Yeah, man. So like I said, I, I'd heard them about the farm when the farmhouse album came out um, just loosely. And then in high school, like I was kind of in, getting into the jam scene but they were just one of many bands in that scene mm -hmm. to me at that point you know going to festivals and stuff but i i can't pinpoint a specific moment but i know i think it was whenever they released um the new year's 95 show uh they finally released it you know like a mm -hmm. um you know a soundboard soundboard yeah band released and i can't remember what year that was i want to say it was and maybe it was even before this that this happened, but this is a vivid memory. And I listened to that show and I was just blown away at like how perfectly so <laughs> right? like just how perfect of a show that you can can be a band and play three sets. And every single like non jammed tune was played to perfection, perfect, <laughs> perfection. And then every jam at the entire night was just like they kept it just kept getting better and better, you know, and so. That was a that was a really big one for me. I mean, I, I was just so into grabbing all the live fish CDs. I had like the I bought the the, the live book. fish book, the, 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 book the CD deal, and then yeah. I would like get all of them, and I had them in color coded order, and you know, <laughs> like just that whole era in the early two thousands. Um, and then live fish the the website they started releasing all the shows from oh three oh four. Um on online and just that era man and i just I, once i realized you know once i saw like okay this jet you know this song was played here and it was like this and then i listened to a different version of that song and i started realizing like the the differences and you know because when you hear songs and you hear live shows it's easy for if you don't really have a, a large catalog to like dissect then they right. can kind of be what they are but yeah. when you really start realizing oh man like in this year they were doing this and look at how they've morphed and look at what they were doing here and trey was listening to a lot of like you know sun yeah. law in 95 and it made him do that you know whatever and yeah. so um once i kind of started and i can't pinpoint an exact moment i was a fan of the band but at some point it shifted there was a period for like three or four years of my life where i listened to nothing but fish and ween and it was just like four years of my life you know yeah. And I listened to Ween for like songs and funny and, and craziness. And I listened to Fish for jams. And it was like just that time when I was in high school and, and right out of high school. So, yeah. And those are two. If you're only going to listen to two bands, like <laughs> those are the two. Pretty bands solid. That, yeah. Pretty dude, good did you one. see the did you see the uh, the Ween pumpkin that I did? I did. That was amazing. man. <laughs> I did a fish pumpkin, the fish logo, this thing. Yeah. I did one. It, it's been years ago. I want to say it was like. 08, 09. Maybe yeah, I did. Like, I did too. Yeah, and and I was really proud of it. But your your ween pumpkin surpassed it. You know, it, you did the whole carving thing. <laughs> yeah, like shaved yeah. off the yeah. skin and stuff. Yeah, I like Dude. got a little. I was like doing this with you know around the S, and it was like trying not to break it. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. yes. So yeah. what I did with whenever I did my fish pumpkin, I took one of my old fish logo shirts and like put it around the pumpkin mm -hmm. and took like a it like a like a pin like a yeah, post-it pin and yeah. just traced it and then nope. cut it out but yeah all those little intricate parts are like oh i'm gonna mess this up i'm gonna mess yeah. this up. <laughs> it's it's not the easiest uh logo to like no you know. yeah it's super hard <laughs> yeah. definitely a, an ambitious uh carving yeah yeah definitely uh, okay so one of the one of the things uh about fish fans is one we're super passionate and then two everyone has a different favorite well favorite everything but favorite jams and so mm -hmm. that's i know it's really hard to pick yeah. one singular favorite jam it's like this is my jam yeah. and we can even make it like a we can make it a top five but yeah, if, you had to, yeah. if you had to pick one like you can only listen to the only time that you can ever listen to fish again for the rest of your life has to be this jam what would it be um the Mike song from New Year's 95 um, <laughs> closes the second set. You got the digital delay loop at the end, but there's a section of I know three, three or four minutes. Um, once the jam breaks away from the Mike song, uh, 
chord pr- structure and all that. Um, I can hear that they, riff in my head right now. That dude, they're they're, <laughs> so, yeah, they're <laughs> so dialed in, and it's one of those things where um, that that jam. I don't know if that jam makes a whole lot of people's top five or whatever, but there's something about that jam for me that that just does it, it in every way. Um, another one would be the Providence Bowie. I mean, you know, just and that goes, whole. dude. I remember the first time that I heard that and like discovered it. Yeah. And I like I'm getting goosebumps even thinking about that moment. I was driving. Yeah. I was driving from Edmond to Oklahoma City. I remember it. That's how vividly I remember it. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah. And then I and then I get on the message boards and everything, and it's one of like the top jams of all time. I had yeah. no knowledge of it. And I just yeah. was like, dude, if you haven't heard this problem, <laughs> yeah. it's like, come on. Yeah. But yeah. That's well, really the, ba- the banger tweezer that's on the live one. Mm-hmm. I discovered that in kind of a similar way, like, cause a live one's like a, a, a fish released thing, you know, and it's right. got some really solid, like good versions of tunes on it. But then I was just at a party or something and that was playing. And then the mic song goes, or not, uh, no, sorry, the tweezer. Yeah, the tweezer goes and like it just goes into all that crazy like craziness. You know, I don't yeah. even you know I don't even think there are that's a decent word. terms to describe some of the things they were doing. You <laughs> yeah. know, but yeah. but and I'm I was just like, what the heck is this? And I go look it up, and it's a live one. And I somehow just never made it that far. And that was early on. You know, when I was younger in the right. in, in my fishdom, but. Yeah. It's like you think yeah. you're like discovering. There's like, oh, you gotta tell people about this jam, and then yeah. like you get online, and it's like, yeah, it's like one of the best jams of all time. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah everybody was, knows about it. I was really um, one of those weirdos that like would force you to stay in my car. No, you gotta hear this part. You can't go yet. And it's like, dude, we got We gotta go eat. Oh, yeah. We gotta do it. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 listen. Do you hear what he's doing? You know, or yeah, I, that's just the way I was. And and I think um, th- that those jams are some of those ones that that uh like the providence boy for instance i've showed it to so many people you know if you got an extra 35 minutes to uh to 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 set and like uh and uh listen to something of music probably gonna gonna dive into that one and the whole crazy lassie part in the middle and then oh you know and but then when when, when they come back in and, and start building back into the the bowie tension release stuff trey's just like thematic like nah, 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 it. it's just so powerful man and so that was that was a big one for me but yeah if i had to pick one it would be the mike song but providence bowie um there's a there's a lot i really like uh summer 97 a lot a lot mm-hmm. i know fall 97 is you know summer 97 gets overshadowed by it fall does 97. and it's 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 thicker and and raunchier and darker kind of in the mm. same you know using some of the same funk effects and and same kind of groove based stuff but there's something about that darker i call it like sludge funk or like yeah you know, <laughs> that 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 really does it for me so that's that's like a, a tour i really like a lot um but yeah probably the mics the mics that's from a, new year's 95 that's a solid one i could listen to that on repeat no yeah. for sure um and we were also talking before we um before we started recording and we're both um in relation you're married to mm-hmm. someone that's not um not a fish fan per se and yeah. i'm dating someone that's the same way it's the only thing that she knows about fish is what i've shown her or mm-hmm, explained yeah. her same for you so with that in mind what song or show would you play for someone that has never heard fish before and you're like trying to recruit them like you're trying to get yeah. them to be on your team what would you yeah. play um so 97 is a year that i think is is good for that because um it's hard to really throw someone into like a banger tweezer craziness <laughs> right you don't want to throw them off the deep end like that but then you want them to understand what what the band is you know right you could play billy breeds mm-hmm. and it's a great album and there's good tunes and it's production value but that doesn't give them who fish is that's a right you know so if you're trying to really get them to see who fish is i, I would go to maybe like 12 29 97 oh yeah it's a really solid show that's not so crazy out there um but still gives you an idea of gives you an idea but it's it's groovy and it's crisp 
you know, Fun. you can't throw on a, an audience recording, you know, and like of like some <laughs> crazy random ninety five yeah. show or something. Or so I would. I would the, the things I would keep in mind are: Does the sound quality sound good? Is it, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, we all know the guys in Fish aren't like opera singers or like you know classically trained amazing singers. So right. you want to present them to a newbie in the first in the best light, you know. So yeah. something like that, man. Um, there's there's individual jams that I would maybe go to that that the the you enjoy myself from 12 29 97 mm-hmm. is one of those is another one of those jams that's like it's crisp and it's not super stretched out super long but it's like really well played yeah. that would be maybe something i would play and i played those the tube from that show oh yeah just like um, those funk you know like yeah where you can yeah. just be like yeah no this I, yeah, yeah I don't care who this is this is awesome do- Nobody hears like a good funk groove and says, "Oh, that sucks." I don't want that. <laughs> right? You know, they they at least like kind of vibe with it, whether yeah. it's their cup of tea or not. But or like a two thousand one or something like that, where it's yeah. just like, "Hey, you like to dance? Listen yeah. to this. This yeah. is fish." Yeah, no. I've, it's always interesting, like seeing where or how someone would present fish to someone, because the approach that I've always taken is like, and like kind of you said, like you can't just jump off the diving board into the deep end and be like, "Hey, here's." Uh, <laughs> Here's yeah. here's the hour long runaway gym, yeah. um, but you. So I've always started with like some popular, so like a like a tweezer or something like in the, play like a studio cut yeah. to like hear like the fun. You know, it's like okay, like it's rock and roll, but it's like kind of weird and it's like yeah. it's some different sections and stuff. And then I'll like go into I'll do like a um, I've used the the free off of that Brooklyn show oh. at, like O three yeah. Where that's it's like that's one of those ones that's a really really good one yeah that's, that's a killer it's a good song free is like you know one of those yeah. songs that's well sung lyrics are, are good the, the guitar just this the whole song is good but then yeah. that the interplay between mike and trey on that on that one is just yeah that's a killer that was you know that was a um a, a light amidst the darkness in that year you know there was a few a <laughs> yeah. few things that year that really stood out but it was a whole lot of uh, of darkness that. Oh years. yeah, the those uh, a two point era that was. And the, I guess it would it depending on who you're who you're trying to introduce as well. You know, is this yeah. someone that like is a big jazz fan but doesn't know fish? Well, okay. Or is this like someone that listens to top forty radio? Mm-hmm. You know, like kind of trying to keep that in mind. But but really, like fish is one of those acquired tastes, even yeah. within like the music community. Mm-hmm. of people that listen to you know classic rock or you know or, or maybe even like some of the a little more out there stuff fish is still an acquired taste you know because yeah. you know you hear you hear certain things and it's like oh well this dude's a playing a vacuum and he's wearing a dress like some of that stuff <laughs> takes a little <laughs> time to like you have to you have to understand what it is and yeah. that takes you have to really give it some effort. I think sometimes, you yeah, know, it's like that. I don't know if you've seen this meme, but it's like, um, it's like family member asks like what fish is about. And then it shows like that, a picture of Trey from that one shot. I think it was in 96 where he's got like three or four guitars on and he's like, do it like just <laughs> yeah. tapping on them and stuff. Yeah. And it's just like noise. Yeah. I want to, or it might've been the, um, uh, the um i'm wanting to say divided sky but the it, i can see the um the covering right now it's like blue um and it's whenever they had the percussionist uh from i believe santana, santana. With- that was like fall 96 i know that they've had yeah. him a few times um could have been that. i'm not familiar with yeah. that particular uh picture or whatever but oh it's it's fun I'll, w- once we're done with this i'll send it to you so you can yeah. like have a visual but yeah he's got like four guitars on it just like making a bunch of noise and like doing that goofy grin he's do- he does you know yeah yeah um and another like based off of what you just said with like even in the fish community like there's you know people disagree on like what you know this is the best that's the best 1.0 4.0 whatever yeah. whatever so just for a little bit of controversy yeah what is one fish song and i didn't want to say what's one fish song that you hate because that's a little too aggressive yeah but what is one fish song you would be okay with never hearing again man um you know i never understood this song like i know when you're there the bounciness of it like 
and it's an old song from the early days, but Sparkle has never really done it for me. Is, is, are you a Sparkle guy? <laughs> I don't hate it. <laughs> you do what? I don't hate it. You don't hate it. Mm -hmm. Something about it, like the, the bounciness of it, like, I, I don't know. It's just, it just never done it for me. So I, I get that, that some people like it, some people don't. I know that's probably not what a lot of people, that's probably not a song that a lot of people would go to. There's a few tunes, but overall, man, uh, you know, I, I try to let them do their thing. And I would say 98% of their catalog I'm, I'm pretty on board with. Um, <laughs> Even even some of the the in the last ten years or so, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, but yeah, you know that's that's one as far as live. Like, okay, I'm gonna try to run and squeeze a quick bathroom break in for that <laughs> one. Um, Friday is one. I'm, you uh, know. That's a, Friday is a good song song. Like if a yeah. band other like I want to hear a band other than Fish do that. Like a band yeah. that can has better vocals you yeah. know <laughs> yeah do that song because the song just as a whole you know like a composition is a beautiful song but i just feel like a a different band could execute that song better yeah well so round room is is one of my favorite fish albums it's right um it's i think it's super underrated i like i think every song on it is pretty good and even friday like I, I have a, a bad taste in my mouth because I went to a show in Dallas in 2016 and with Friday and, and a buddy of mine, Kyle, you know, Kyle mm -hmm. Leonard, he, he was, he went to a, some shows in, in the 2.0 post hiatus era. And that's when his first, that, wasn't his first show Coventry. No, no. Kyle's first show was the New Year's 02 and 03. Oh, okay, first gotcha. Show back from, and he went to, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't remember how many shows he went to in 2.0, but mm -hmm. he definitely was at Coventry. But, but he, he saw a bunch of shows where they like played Friday in like some really bad spots and like where you want them to jam and then they throw like a, you know, a ballad in there. Right. But they played that show in 2016 in, Dallas, which is pretty much a hometown show for me. Yeah, uh, me and you both grew, growing up in southern Oklahoma. Uh, it's an hour and a half away, um, and they it was it was the worst fish show I've seen. And it was not that they played super bad; there just was no jams. And then the second set, they just kept playing song after song after song. And, and it was almost like they were like because they had they had Halloween coming up. It was in the fall tour was kind of a weird placement like, of a show. So I'm not going to get mad at them about it, but they played Friday, like late in the second set after they hadn't jammed whatsoever. And I was just like, really? It almost felt like a middle finger. You yeah. Know? I know <laughs> they weren't, you know, it wasn't like they were, you know, whatever. Yeah. They're doing what like, they're doing. They're moving through their tour. And who am I to like, like yeah. how dare you come and not jam the second set at my hometown show, you know? Right. But yeah. Friday kind of Cause it was like at the right time to where I was just like, really Friday? Like, yeah. You know, and, and so. You're like seven songs deep in the second set. You're just like waiting. You're like, okay, yeah. they're going to close it with this. There was literally gonna... like two minutes worth of type two jamming. Maybe I like get that point. Was, you know, so. Yeah. Anyway, Dude, that reminds me of the, uh, the Oklahoma city show. You yeah. went to that one, right? Yeah. And, and you know what? I was probably the, the right shade of drunk or something. Cause I really dug that show at the, the moment in the moment. But, uh, you know, that was a show that there was like a, a bunch of jam tunes back to back to back to back to back. And then there was like short little snippet we, jams. We right? never got, and it's like, they never off. really went there, yeah. but they, they went type two in a few spots. Little yeah. bitty bits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I get it. Both, both quote unquote hometown shows, North and South kind of, kind of, uh, wet the bed a little bit yeah. in, in 3.0 era. So yeah. I'm but with you. I've seen some good ones too, you know. So you take the good with the bad, and I, I and doubt they ever want to go out there and play a bad show. So you know, just try right. to be understanding that, like, hey, it's not all. It doesn't revolve around me or any one person. It's whatever they're doing. And right, and that's. I mean, it kind of goes in with like the beauty of seeing fish in general because if it's like a gamble. Because people say, you know, like, oh, why have you seen fish 50 times? Or like, why do you keep seeing the same bit? Why are you so obsessed? Because, yeah, you can go to a Dallas show or an Oklahoma City show and get, you know, a fish greatest hits album played for you with no jams. Yep. 
or you can go to a show and get a six song set and have your mind blown. It's like, yep. you don't know yep. what you're getting. And I think that's the beauty of it. Like you yep. have to have the quote unquote. Well, bad I, I, I think about that sometimes I was thinking about it. So this, this recent, this recent year, 2021, like amazing taking stuff deep, like jamming right out the gate in the first set, like just stuff that they haven't done, you know, yeah. um, in a long time, if ever. And, you know, like I was thinking about it and I was like, if they came out and played five song first sets and three or four song second sets, every show that would become mundane. Right. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we want until we get it all the time. And then we want, well, you know, I, I was digging whenever they were, you know, yeah. there, was, there was like a, a um, up and down, you know? Yeah. I mean, and it doesn't the floor, the floor or the pedal to the metal all the time. And you don't want, you know, the car to be in park, this, the, the ride is what the ride is. Sometimes you're on, you're on city streets and sometimes you're on interstates. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think if you're always on interstates, you're like, Oh my gosh, like yeah, you know, slow Let's down and then slow it down for a second. Slow. And that takes that, like, once again, that takes away the beauty from it and like the, the specialness of it. You know, it's like, yeah. if you know, every single time that you go to a show, you're getting a five songs, five song set and it's going to be a monster jam. It's like, then what makes it special? Yeah. What makes it different than Cincinnati or, yeah. you know, whatever show they just played? Yeah. You gotta, it's Sometimes you want, you want them to earn a cool down song so that the cool down song hits the way it's supposed to. And sometimes, yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's one of those things where I think we, the grass is always greener on the other side until we're standing on that grass. And then we're like, yeah, it was pretty cool back on the other side of the fence too. So yeah. kind of trying to keep in, uh, uh, keep in mind those kind of things, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, You're like, man, I really like the song bug, but I've been to 300 shows and they haven't played it. Cause they're just playing tweezer and down with disease. The whole yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I, okay. So this next question, um, I kind of stole from a meme or not a meme, but just like a post on one of those, um, fish boards that we were talking about earlier and i thought it was an interesting question so that's why i put it in here um what band member do you think you would best get along with oh man um probably trey uh, mike's a little i mean i'm a kind of a weird guy but mike is a <laughs> little too you know as far as like like we would I'm trying to think of what a, a like a coffee talk with Mike would be like, and I I have no idea. Like it would, it could you know, go so many different ways. It could we could be talking about whatever, and then um, Fishman, I think I would get along with pretty good, but but Trey, just because I mean I uh, just talking music, like I you know I've outside of the fish world even like I just I love music of all types and all genres and. I really like, you know, I try to, to, to fill my head full of who the bands are. What were they, what, what period were they doing this and that, and you know, where, where they record this album and what was, what was going on around, like not more than just the music. Mm -hmm. And I feel like out of the, out of all the guys, I feel like Trey is kind of, that's kind of his vibe too. So I don't know, probably Trey. I mean, that's, I, I don't want that, that to be like a, Oh, he, of course it's Trey, but no, I think, I really honestly think he, he would probably be the one that I would like to chop it up with the most, you know? Yeah. Especially like if you want to deep dive in on music yeah. and stuff, I feel like that's yeah. going to be the way. Yeah. And you guys are both redheads. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ginger unite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, one last question uh, before we wrap up here from all of the shows that you've hit, in tour i know we i've never done a full tour you said earlier you've never done a full tour but what do you have a a favorite memory or like a funny story that's like sticks in your head like whenever you think about fish tour and like all the stuff you've done you're like oh my gosh that was cool or that was funny or oh mm -hmm. do you remember when that happened what's your favorite memory from tour yeah uh it's hard to narrow it down to one i mean right uh, I, real quick before i get specific the the festival eight um Halloween festival in 09 was super fun. Um, you know, what you guys the, dress up as? We we were all m members of Street Fighter, the the 90s. Oh, that's right. The 90s video game. So I was I had long uh like it was reddish blonde hair, but I was a uh, uh, Ken, the the ninja guy, and then my buddy Blake has got dark hair. He was Ryu. Um 
Kyle Leonard was Vega. So we we did the whole theme. So it was a group of us that did it. Right. But it was just the weather, man, was great. The uh, and that the, was in India, right? Yeah, India. Yeah. yeah. Um, just we took a big conversion van that was like ten or like ten of us in a big van that drove out there. It was like twenty two plus hours from Oklahoma to Southern California. Right. And so it, it was just one of those fun trips, right? Um, that Miami run that New Year's was really fun. It was. Fun. Um, but the, so at at the Hampton shows, the comeback shows in 09, a buddy of mine, um, because tickets were super hard to get, people were paying out the wazoo for them. Mm-hmm. Um, I I had all I had tickets to all three nights. Um, my buddy Kyle, he had he had one Friday night and two Sundays, and he was wanting to trade one of his Sundays for a Saturday. Saturday, right? And then a couple other friends of mine, but. Friday, I think, was really hard to get. I don't know if anybody showed up there. Or, well, I'm sure there were people, but not very many people probably showed up without a Friday ticket unless they just right. were trying to get a shot in the dark. But I think there was a lot of other people that had the same kind of idea that Kyle had. Like, all right, I got my Friday, so I'm good the first night, and then I can try to figure it out. I have two Sundays. I can do some trading. But mm-hmm. Saturday was a really, really hard ticket to get. And so he was like – had these two Sundays and then it comes down to it on Saturday night or the show is fastly approaching. We've been like trying to find him a ticket all day. Got your 10,000 steps in for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and nothing was happening. And just, man, like, so, you know, the, the, the saying like, man, you look like your dog just died. Mm-hmm. Like as we're literally about to go into the show, Kyle is sitting there like with this just sadness on his face and he's about to have to chill in the parking lot while we go into the show. And um, and I was like, man, we'll figure it out. Come on, come on, we'll sneak in. Dude, we're going to make it happen, you know? And so we get to – the way this was set up is there was long lines at like a, a fenced-in area outside of that, and you had to show that you had a ticket, and then they searched your bag to get into like this corralled area before you scan which was another line to go into the venue where they actually scanned your ticket. So you had two checkpoints, right? Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of shows, a lot of venues do this, but at the time I hadn't seen the, that exact setup. So we had like some extra, you know, other night ticket stubs or whatever, but we thought, okay, if we can get, um, if we can get past that first checkpoint and then all of a sudden, Oh, Hey, uh, one, of my, one of my buddies, Paul, he went in with, with his ticket, showed it to him, went to the checkpoint. I showed him my ticket, went to the checkpoint. I immediately handed my stub to Paul. Kyle was behind me without a ticket. Like, hey, my buddy, I forgot he's got my ticket in his hand. And then my buddy walks back up with two tickets. Right, oh. One of them's mine, right? So this was the way we got him past the first checkpoint was, oh, hey, I forgot my, my buddy has my other ticket stub. I forgot to grab it from him. So we get him Smart. past the first checkpoint. And then now the tougher part is getting him into – the scan part, right? How, right. Do you do that? how do you beat that? And so they had the venue. Well, if you've ever been to Hampton Coliseum, but like the, the it's like double doors and then space of like window and then double doors, you know? Got and you. so there was a line at each door, but they were like back to back, like side to side doors. And there was a, a scanner person here and a scanner person here. And you walked up, you know, if you were in this line, you, this person scans you and then, and so the way we were able to get him past this one was we, you know, got, got our ticket scanned. And then I like just went to like, I was going to put it in my pocket and then slipped it back to him. Uh-huh. And then when he walked up, they were about to scan. He's like, Oh no, this lady just scanned it in the other side. And then the guy was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> right. And it, dude, it, it, it's hard to explain, but it was one of those moments where it was like, we just pulled off this master heist. You ever seen like yeah. a heist movie and oh, we yeah. like mapped it all out? You know, we were like planning it in the line. Okay, here's what we're, here's how we're going to do it. And yeah. um, it was just one of those moments, man. But as soon as we all got in there, the, the, the sad puppy dog face went to like group joy and we were like jumping and like dancing down the hall. And it was just like one of those moments where, you know, I'll never forget it. And, and he tells the story all the time. And I, I mean, anytime we're talking fish, that's one of the first stories that comes up. So, so we, uh, we snuck him into a show that people were paying like $400 for. 
dollars for a ticket, five hundred dollars for Dude, a ticket. And, and I can uh, feel that feeling right now because like even whenever you know, like you stub someone down to the floor, you know, or like out of the stands or something like yeah. that. You have that like adrenaline rush of like, oh, you're span and then like you go, yeah. you know. So I can only imagine just you know, the like, elevatedness of yeah, the you're particular already show. Pumped, yeah. Like to see fish and then like you have that yeah. on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's a it's a great feeling. But that's awesome you got in. Yeah, no, and it's it's it was it was a super cool moment. You know, hey, look, we're we we give the band anybody listening, we give the band our money. Like we're not oh. trying to skimp out on things. They've got uh, plenty of money. In that situation, you guys would have all done what we did, and you got to do it probably you less successfully though. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it takes, dude. It takes like, it takes some skill. Yeah, I remember. Um, I wasn't there for the show, but those um. The farewell shows um, where Trey was playing with Dead and Company. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, a lot of our uh, buddies went to that, and I won't say his name because I don't want to out him. But uh, went there with no tickets, and every single night just got in the line with a twenty to the ticket person. Yeah, handed the ticket person a twenty, and they was like, "All right, hey." <laughs> It's yeah. like, hey, some you paid. It, fish isn't getting your money, or the band's not getting your money, yeah. but somebody's getting your money. So yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. Those are all those are fun parts of tour. I mean, and it's part of it. You know, yeah. there was one. There was one show. Um, it was a Dallas show. Um, where they were playing. Uh, that super small. Um, it wasn't 2016 because I had already left. Um, but 2014 maybe. Do you remember those? Whenever they did 15, Austin and they, Dallas, 15 and 16, they played. It was the same venue. It was like the. Uh, a uh, Verizon small. wireless place or something. Yeah, I think yes. it, it's it's in, it was in Grand Prairie. Yes, yeah, know, right yeah. outside of Dallas. But yeah, they played that same venue two years in a row, fifteen and sixteen. The year gotcha. in fifteen, they played Austin a one off and then a one off. And no, they played two nights in Dallas the next that year. I think. Okay, gotcha. So but the- whatever it was, but yeah, it's it was it's in Grand Prairie. It's like a variety. And what's interesting is we all had AT and T phone carriers and you got zero service in there because it was like a Verizon thing. And we're like all sitting over like, man, these guys like this conspiracy theory that the Verizon has shut down all of our all yeah. of our phone service because we got AT&T. Or you're just in a venue. <laughs> or you're just in a venue where thousands of people are trying to use their phones all at once. But I remember that show and like part of like sneaking in and stuff like that. Total asshole move on my part because it's like two tiers. There's like a upstairs like balcony area and then there's like a downstairs but the balcony isn't like a oh it's 30 foot off the ground it's like maybe 10 12 feet yeah. and um i had the upper balcony ticket and so i'm like looking around you know and everything like that i'm looking i'm like okay it's not a far jump you know and so i wait until the lights go down and i just go i take off hop down and i land on this woman like Ooh. I landed on her, like knocked her down. I fell wow. down and she's like, what are you doing, asshole? And this and that. And she was with a guy. And at the time, I'm like, not going to stick around and be like, hey, I'm sorry. You know, so I was just like, sorry, got up and like took off in the crowd. Yeah. And then I get home that next night and have a message from one of my buddies that I've met going to Dick's, you know, like mm-hmm. when, whenever you camp and stuff, you meet people, exchange yeah. information. And I have a message from him. And he's like, hey, um, were you at? Dal- the Dallas shows last night. I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Were you there?" And he was like, "Yeah, I saw you. Um, you landed on my wife." Oh, and I, was, <laughs> I was like, "Are you kidding me?" I was like, "That was your wife." He was like, "He was like, yeah." As soon as like I saw you and like you turned around and said sorry and took off running, he was like, "That was Clay." And I was like, and so he like got his wife on the. I was like, "Look, I am so sorry. Like I yeah. was just trying to get down. Like I was in the moment. I had a little too much to drink." But it was like one of those things where he was like, "It's all good, man." He was like. I, He's like, it was a dick move, but like, I just wanted yeah. to like, bust your balls a little bit. Yeah. Like, no one was like seriously hurt or anything, but it was just kind of like one of those yeah. should have yeah. done that. <laughs> yeah. Dang. And you know, with the, not to get into popular culture, but what's happened recently in like people dying, you know, and that's what yeah. my wife, I was talking to her, you know, about this whole, you know, astro, astro world. Thing. Um, I was talking to her and I was like, yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure a, pretty much every like big festival or, large concert gathering of you know 50,000 or more people I'm pretty sure I always hear like oh however many people died at the, you know right and it's it's 
you know, anyway, not to dip off too much, but it, it's, it's one of those realities where it's like, Hey man, there's a lot of people wilding out. There's a lot of like people in one small place mm-hmm. and depending on what type of music, especially like yep. you know, people are going crazy. And so, but yeah, that's, that's one of those things. I'm sure that was probably a, a very like moment whenever he's yeah. like, yeah, you fell on my wife, homie. You know? It was like one of those things where I was like, Oh my God. Cause like in my head at the time I was like, I was like, okay, that sucks. I kind of feel bad, but I'm never going to see these people again. Yeah. <laughs> like little do I know. He's like, yeah, no, yeah. you're busted. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it's fun. Um, dude, thank you so much yeah, for dude. being on the beginning episode of this new hey, fish man. podcast. I can't I don't want it to be the last. To be the first guy, you know, dude, I have to <laughs> like our, our aquarium days. It was, yeah. it was fun, man. And we weren't, I mean, we're still not in the studio together, but yeah. Back then, we didn't even have like the video stuff. So it was yeah, like, I was early. on my phone pacing around in my yard in West can, Oklahoma yeah. with my notes, which my hand scribbled note, like show notes. Because to, to to let your audience in, like we were like deep dissecting show. Yeah. Like this was a weekly thing, and then you know, Fish had just played you know whatever show on the Fall yeah. Thirteen tour the week before, and so we're like deep Picking dissecting and diving into it. So. Um, but yeah, just hand scribbled notes about jam timings and where yeah. they went with this. And we were really nerding out, but yeah, it was a good, good time. time man. Yeah. And like you said, you were pacing around, like you could hear like every once in a while, like you get out of breath or like you'd hear like a dog bark or like yeah. a siren in the yeah. back. <laughs> so professional. We were so yeah. professional. <laughs> but dude, yeah. Thank you again. Yeah, um, I want to have you on um, more than just this once. Um, we'll connect again on that. Um, and I will get this posted up and uh go from there yeah man cool man i'm glad i could glad i could do it man i uh, enjoyed it me too me too all right everybody thank you for uh listening to the first episode of we are everywhere podcast and we'll be back when we're back